here at Epic Guitar Instruction. How you doing? We're going to have a good time today playing a really fun guitar, one of my favorites. We're going to learn a great Hendrix tune and we're going to go through Voodoo Child. So what I think will be fun today is, you know, the way that I learned this actually was the first concert I ever saw was Stevie Ray Vaughan, which was fantastic. Um, like many people that are my age, I think that was kind of the gateway to so many great things at the time. And we all definitely tried to sound like him even at one point. But we're going to learn Voodoo Child. We're going to go through a combo of kind of Stevie's version and Hendrix's version. So that way we have a solid way to play it yourself at home and enjoy all the fun parts of it. So we're in standard tuning, right? Uh, Hendrix would be down a half step in some occasions. And Stevie Ray Vaughan would be in, uh, down a half step in some occasions. But I think for standard tuning, it'll be better for transferring the information to somebody like yourself at home. So we're going to get into this with a Wawa. I'm using a really simple practice amp today, just so you know you don't need a lot to achieve this song. A Wawa is really cool. You can play it without it. I'm going to go through it as though you have one. You could treat it just the same if you don't. We're all good. And to be honest, I'm playing through a Roland Micro Cube. So this is all simple stuff today. Blues is reverb. I like to dance in some reverb, so we're going to have a fun time. Now, the way that we want to think about this intro. Now, the intro, of course, uses that wah-wah, but I'm just going to go over the rhythm playing. You're very percussive with, with this kind of concept. We're going to mute with our left hand, but not actually play anything. So we get this. Now, the timing of the rhythm honestly comes from just hearing the song so much. I think that really kind of helps me a lot. You could be pretty open with it, right? Any of that kind of stuff is good because when you use the wah wah, you tap to the beat of the song. That's how you do this. So if I'm tapping to the beat of the song, and all my foot is doing is just going one, two, three, four. And that's how we play to the, or use the wah wah in most cases. That's how it's going to start us off today. So if I'm going, Doesn't matter where your left hand is. I gotta say, I get asked that question sometimes. Today it sounds better near the front. So we're gonna have fun with this. Now, getting into the riff, let's just get started. We have a hammer on that's gonna happen on the third string from seven to nine. I'm gonna go back to a fretted note of seven. I'm going to hit the ninth fret on the fourth string. I'm going to go back to the seventh fret, third string. Now that first initial hammer on is a little quicker. Has a little bit of vibrato on it. Jumping to the fourth string on the fifth fret. Two strikes of that string with a down strum. I'm going to hit seven and pull off. Go to the fifth string. Now that's the general melody that we have going on here. Now I'm going to bring the wah wah in in a minute, but I can trill. That's kind of a nice little inflection that you can put in this song as well. When you do a little bit of a, a vibrato into a pull off. So when we end this the second time, that's going to be our little melody note. First one, yeah, Miles, there we are. See, when Miles comes in the picture, we're doing good. I was waiting for the mascot. Sorry, if you catch me laughing, we're, we had to stop there. Miles, Miles just had to come up and hang. Miles loves Jimi Hendrix as many of us do, and you know, I believe dogs are good luck, so we're all good here. So, uh, going back into the riff, we have. That's our first little inflection at the end. And that's really what we're working with. You could trill some of those things, but with the wah-wah adds all of our nice effect. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, if I roto vibe that kind of effect, you go really fast with my foot. That's going to be our lick getting out of that. So I'm going to go. Now the wah wah started from a back position. I'm going to show this in a couple places, but I'm going to bend. This is built around an E minor chord. This is our fourth form of our E minor pentatonic. So you hear that clear distinction. I'm raking, coming down, 10, 8. Do that here and hit that low string that's another thing people will do as well and you get a really big sound rather you can tell I'm controlling the monster right now but if I go double stop I'm gonna lead into my riff so let me just kind of play that a little bit Or, and the way that I do that is I start with the wah wah all the way back, and then as I go, boom, it's back again. So you get that effect, you get that, and then you're set to gear that thing forward. It's kind of you know it's important to get some of those dynamics in there when we're talking about the song. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna summarize or generalize what the main riff has become over time. Um, I think there's so much room for improv. There's so many great versions. None of them were bad. Um, Noel Redding actually did tell me once on the telephone when I interviewed him once, which was really cool. It's a different story. Uh, he said, Hendrix never played bad. If it sounded bad, we couldn't figure out how to keep up with him. And I always thought that was really interesting. But I think the way we're going to summarize this... <laughs> That is our main theme. So I hit the low string. I'm going to include my flat five. When I put my middle finger, I'm going to hammer on, pull off to an open string, and go to that E note. I'm going to hit the low string again. Using my third finger flat, I'm going to hit these two. Reaching my middle finger over, I'm going to resolve it. So I have open string, open string. So many inflections we could do, right? If I start to take this into another place, even in some of those more mellow versions. That lick is right there off of the first position of E pentatonic, bending on the third string. You hear a lot of those in this song, a muted percussive down, and you're hitting that low string on an up, and you're coming out of those strings. Sometimes you do hit both of them. And you get those harmonic overtones and weird noises sometimes that are kind of cool in there too. But from when this kicks off... second fret and I'm going to toggle this thing. I'm not going to do it too much. This is not my guitar. I don't want to beat and torture somebody else's guitar. But that's how you get that sound. You bend this thing up and you toggle back and forth like that. And it's really, really cool. Now, if Miles is going to let me do this because Miles is loving my wah-wah right now. I'm going to do the wah-wah with this bend at the same time and I get more of an effect out of it. Let's play it so we can see this. Again. 
So let's look at the tone selections that we have here as we play that riff, and I'm just tapping my foot with the wah-wah. Um, now with this, I'm gonna go to typically this position here, and I get this sound. <laughs> Now I have a lot of gain because I don't want to use any pedals today for the demonstration. But if I want to back down some of the gain a little bit, I'll get a little bit more to those purest kind of true sounds. So we can play it and teach it a couple volume. All these good options. You see we got my pick? What are we gonna do? We're going to grab it is what we're going to do. We can play it a little bit, but everybody, we're not that magical. We make mistakes, picks go flying, pieces of our engine are all over the place, but we're holding it together here at Epic Guitar Instruction so we can give you the finest in quality education. Uh, we are in the middle of our verse. As we go through this, we've got a couple of licks that we've summed up. We got the cool little... Right, and now we're gonna talk about what he sings over as far as a melodic line that's played on the guitar. Turn off that wah-wah. I'm gonna slide from two to four on my third string. That's my middle finger doing that, and I'm going to grab open string. Really important, we're keeping that rhythm going. So what I'm doing there is I bend on I'm using my third finger to go for this distance. I think it's easier than my pinky, personally. But I just had these visions of Stevie wrenching the you-know-what out of this. And then going into that band. That was like the coolest thing to me when I was a kid. So as I have this little part here, I'm jumping low. Now all of these little open notes, there, part of the riff, low string, next part of the verse, high string, You can see we got a lot of dynamic range there. These songs are so fun because there's so many versions of these things, man, where they're mellow, you know, and you don't even have to use a wah-wah. That's what I'm saying at the beginning of this. Somebody waters that thing out, you know. put my third finger on A. This is the sixth fret. My first finger is on a B note. Third finger is muting out the D string. And a two and a three and a four and down to the next position. This is four and two. Kind of a classic thing. Sliding from 12, pentatonic position. Double stop. Those are such crucial, crucial Hendrix isms and Stevie things to do. We really lay aggressive into a double stop. A little bit of a rig. You're gonna pick 14, pull off, and go to the 14 there. Go back to this. Three. This is, this is five and three on the third fret. I can include four. I've seen people do that. I don't dig that as much, though, to be honest. So I'm going to go three. And I'm going to go up to five. You can do 
that. That's going to lead us into the solo. So I think really all you need to do to experience this at home is to be able to kind of noodle. Like I'm going to take the wah-wah out of it as I've done so far. I'll put the wah-wah back in the game in a minute, but we have just even this. And the dynamic range that comes from it. that you need, all centered around really this. If you can keep that going and you can tap your foot to the rhythm, you're learning so much while you're playing Jimi Hendrix for one. And I, the freedom that comes from Hendrix is knowing that we will never sound like him. I mean, I gotta say, you know, when we're artists and we're trying to learn other people, by all means, go for broke, learn it note for note, experience what it's like to try to play like Jimi Hendrix. We're lucky to share in what it sounds like, but no, he's Hendrix. We're going to be us. That's the main thing. So you can't do it wrong. When you take that out of the equation of trying to sound like him exactly, we want the tones in our own way that we can do them so we can experience it. But let's take all the pressure off ourselves and let's have some fun. Look at what makes the song exist and play it in our own way. And that's all we're really going to be able to do. Um, when we get into the solo, I'll say this and then we're going to end it. There's one main little simple theme that's built off of some pentatonic playing that we need to grab and then we're home free. A nice little melody. Think of a melody. Somebody's singing this. Bend up and release. Notice that bend and grab. So little things like that are crucial. Now this one, that's gonna be a bend here. This is a cool part too. We're gonna bend on the third string, bend up to the high E string. Here's our lick. Here's our lick. It's all we need. Anything that does something similar to that for all you blues players out there. We're looking for this. You can do whatever you want. I mean, right here, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit and say we're playing Jimi Hendrix. We have all kinds of great things to teach you how to solo. And this is my chance to say it. Hello. Ding dong. This is a good part of the video because what we can do when we get to this section and you've learned all these parts of the song, you can say, hey, now I need some solo information. And we have some free things that we can provide for you that are all in that link below in the YouTube text box. If you click on that link, what we're going to give you is the scale diagrams that will work pentatonically, in this case, in the key of E, so that way we can play along to the song. But we're going to show you not only in this structure, but in any way that you want to get comfortable soloing. We have all the scales you need. We have all the approaches that you need. And it's in a great, nice diagram and PDF file that you can look through and go and enjoy. And it's all off that link that you see below. So just click on that link and we're good. Because as I generalize this and I say, hey, look, you know, the solo starts off with a melody. A double bang. Goes back to our rhythm does this high bend. From there, you can do any pentatonic lick that you feel comfortable with as long as we go back to this rhythm. So we can have fun with or without a wah-wah, and hopefully we've dissolved a little bit of this song and some of the secrets of this song so that way you feel comfortable enough to play it yourself. I'm going to jam it. Please, everybody, subscribe to the channel at the Guitar Instruction. We love it when you give us your feedback. You know, write and leave us a comment. 
like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell us what you want to know, tell us what you think. We love all those things. So I'm going to play this out for you. I appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>